Happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to our LLKC Virtual Body of Christ gathering on this first Sabbath of September 2020. You're probably wondering, why did Byron go to our church campus? It's empty, it's all fenced in, and you can't even get on to the, to the front door of our church. One thing I sense by being here is God telling me, be still and know that I am God. As we've been gathering virtually, I've realized how fully in control God is of this world. It doesn't matter if we are focused on changing out a certain percentage of our investments to precious metals or worried about our mail-in ballot in the upcoming November elections or just worried about the future. God is still in control and we don't need to worry. This pandemic may increase that element of uncertainty in our lives, but still, God is in control. Our EM small group network is a mirror image of our Sabbath school lesson this past week. Small groups make a difference in fellowship, in service, and in soul winning. Pastor Richard is starting a two-month sermon series on the book of Acts called The Acts plan. Let's see if during this series he emphasizes the importance of spirit-filled small groups at church growth. I pray that we each seek the special blessing that our Heavenly Father has prepared for us this Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. I hope you had another good week and I am so happy to be here with you again. So today I have a setup happening over here and I thought that we could do a little experiment. So I have my train here. This train might look familiar to a lot of you and we are going to see if we can help this train get across my bridge. So I have my train, I have my piece of paper, and I just have my two boxes here. Simple, right? So let's see if I can wind up my train and we can help the train get across. Here we go. Oh no, that did not end well, did it? If this was a real train and a real bridge, that would not have ended well. So let's see, I do wanna see if I can get my train across. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to see if I can make this work. So maybe if I take my paper and make a few changes, I might make one fold going this way. And maybe I'll make another fold going this way. So all I'm gonna do is just fold my paper in two different spots and let's see if that made a difference at all. So it's still the same piece of paper, same boxes, same train. Let's see if this helped at all. What do you guys think will happen? Look at that, it made it across. It made it across without falling. Did you see that boys and girls? That is so cool. And the interesting thing is I didn't really have to do that much to this paper to make the train go safely across. All I did was make two really simple folds on my paper, not complicated ones at all. And you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of Jesus's power that we learned a lot about this summer, didn't we? Now Jesus, comes into your life and makes just really small folds or changes in your life, that tells me that it's enough to give us strength and to strengthen our lives enough for us to get across our hard things. Just like how me folding this paper helped my train get across this bridge safely, if you allow Jesus and his power to come in and make those small changes in your life, friends, then you will have the strength to get through the hard things in your life as well. And I think that is so such awesome news. So I hope you have a really good Sabbath. If you have time today, go ahead and try out this train trick because it's really fun and you go ahead and let me know what you think, okay? I'll see you next time, bye. Oh, how high.
If the mountains were where you hide, oh how far I'd scale the valleys. If you grace the other side, oh how long have I chased rivers from lowly seas to where they rise against the rush of grace descending. From the source of its supply Cause in the highlands and the heartache You're neither more or less inclined I would search and stop at nothing You're just not that hard to find
Good morning and happy Sabbath. The scripture reading for this week comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and, me and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. The one in church, let's bow our heads with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God in heaven, blessed be thy name. God, as we come together as a church, please help us to learn and know more about you and about the Holy Spirit. Thank you for praying. Uh, thank you for Pastor Richard uh, for giving us um, a great message about your Holy Spirit coming into our hearts and I pray that we will fill up with the Holy Spirit after this church sermon and yeah. God, um, since with the COVID situation, I just pray for the church to stay safe out there um, and please help them to remember that we have you and, uh, and each other. Um, and through this COVID situation, I just hope and pray that everything will go back to normal soon. And please be with all the church uh, members out there too. We love you so much and thank you again for Pastor Richard for giving us your sermon. And we love you so much, your name will play, amen. Good morning, LRKC. I just have a little bit of housekeeping, uh, housekeeping to do today. First of all, all of the ministry departments that has been um, doing things, but one of the super vibrant in our church, in our church ministry, is actually the outreach department. So if you have been wondering how you can get involved with the church and what you can do to uh, help people in need in this time of crisis, keep your eyes and ears peeled for outreach projects. Okay, I have noticed that it's the same people again and again coming out for the outreach events. Uh, you, we need new people. We, we need more people. So LKC, let's get involved, okay? Secondly, our search for the new youth pastor is still going on. Please continue to pray for the search committee. Um, I want to get a, like a great pastor for our youth group. So please um, keep that in your prayers. Teenagers are going through 
uh, some hard, really difficult, tough times these days. So I ask you to really keep our youth, uh, the young people in your prayers, and also the search for the uh, pastor in your prayer. Thirdly, we are in the process of updating our weekly newsletter. If you're wondering what that is, it's the text you get each day, and you can just click on it, and you can see the devotionals by pastors, and you can, see the, you can read the articles by our fellow church members. Um, we're changing a few things, okay? But it will resume next week. Now, let's start by playing a game, okay? Just for fun. I'm going to say the commercial slogan, and you try to guess what the company or the product is, okay? Uh, for example, just do it is what? Nike, right? So got it? Okay. First one, happiest place on earth? Disneyland. They are great. Frosted Flakes. Is that too old? Is it like for old people only? Um, I asked my daughter about that one. She didn't know. How about this one? I'm loving it. McDonald's. Once you pop, the fun don't stop. Pringles. Who got everything right so far? Anyone? It's finger licking good. That's KFC. By the way, um, they temporarily stopped this ad due to the pandemic. No joke, they had to stop for now. Taste the rainbow. Skittles. Zoom, zoom. Mazda. Uh, not zoom, it's Mazda. Okay, which insurance company says 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance? That's Gecko, right? I mean, Geico. <laughs> How about this one? It keeps going and going. Yep, it's the Energizer Bunny. Remember the last one. It keeps going and going. It keeps going and going. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we can still worship together. We are scattered, but we are united. We are one community, one church. So help us to remember that and help us to think about that every week. Lord, now today, as we open the Bible, open our hearts also. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible tells us how to live. It does. The followers of Jesus do not live by the world code. We live by the word. I feel like most of us have every intention to live as the scripture tells us, but we always feel like we're not equipped or empowered to put it into action. I want to, but I just find myself not being able to a lot of times. Can you relate? But here's the thing. I believe that God wants us to live beyond what feels comfortable. I believe most of us struggle and we get frustrated because um, God wants us to walk by faith and not by sight. But a lot, a lot of you right now, you've, you've already lowered your life down to what you think you can handle. And I'm sorry to tell you this, uh, but that is not what God wants for you. You see, what you are saying is, I can only experience what is within the boundaries of what I want. But what God wants for us is to live outside of our boundaries of what we normally choose because that's normally what growth, that's normally where growth happens. And that's how we experience God. That's how God does extraordinary things through us. I mean, if the, 
if the Israelites just stayed in Egypt, they would have never eaten manna or drunk water out of the rock in the desert. They would have never seen the Red Sea part and the pillar, or the pillars of fire or the pillars of cloud. If David decided to stay cozy and comfortable, he would have never stayed, he would have never slayed the giant. He would have stayed home, taking care of animals, and he would not have become a king. If Peter stayed in the warm and cozy boat, he would have never walked on water. But he did decide to leave the boat and come out, and he experienced something extraordinary, something supernatural. It was windy, and the water felt cold on his feet, but he walked on water. The reality is that for most of us, we're only going to um, get at the things that we are ready to do, okay? And what I want to tell you today and throughout this new series is that, that that is not the action plan God has for you. You're not on this planet, on this earth, to just do what you feel comfortable uh, doing or to live a life in a bubble that you put yourself into. The life God has created for you is to live a spirit-filled life. Spirit-filled life. I invite you to look at Acts chapter 2 today. Acts chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. The book of Acts is written by a physician named Luke. And yes, he's the same person who wrote the Gospel Luke. In fact, most theologians uh, believe that the Gospel Luke was volume 1 and the book of Acts was volume 2, but it is unified work by Luke. Volume 1 was about Jesus and volume 2 is about the Holy Spirit. The way Luke starts the book of Acts kind of sets the tone for the entire book. Uh, he reminds the readers uh, the words of Jesus regarding the Holy Spirit. The first six verses of Acts chapter 1 repeat the name, the Holy Spirit, three times. The central figure for the book of Acts is the Holy Spirit. In fact, Acts has, the, um, Acts has been called the gospel of the Holy Spirit. What's interesting about the Holy Spirit is that we don't know too much about the Holy Spirit. We know he's part of the uh, three Godheads. If, he, uh, he, if, if God is the Father, uh, Jesus is the Son, um, is the Holy Spirit uh, like, the, like the mom kind of thing? In today's main passage, we see the Holy Spirit coming down on the day of Pentecost. Okay, so what is the day of Pentecost? There were three Jewish holidays, festivals, okay? The, the Passover, um, the, the, the Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacle. And all Jewish men were required to travel and come to Jerusalem for these holidays. Pentecost means the 50th, okay? It means the 50th day because it fell on the 50th day after the Passover. It means a week of weeks, okay? Which means Seven weeks, that's 49 days, right? Seven times same, 49 days. So it fell on uh, 49 days after the Passover, right? The Passover fell in the middle of April. Um, so the day of Pentecost was in the beginning of June. So uh, this is just a few days after Jesus ascended to heaven. As the Bible tells us that Jesus um, stayed uh, on earth for about 40 days after his resurrection. 
So many people traveled and gathered in Jerusalem because of the day of Pentecost. So uh, last time that many people gathered in Jerusalem probably was the Passover when Jesus was crucified. And all these people came back and there was a big crowd on the street. And that's when the day of Pentecost was. And that's when the Spirit came upon the disciples. As we see in today's um, main passage. Luke was not an eyewitness. Um, of this part of Acts. So we may never know precisely what happened on the day of Pentecost, except that the disciples had an experience of the power of the Holy Spirit, like the wind and fire. And then, book, uh, and then Acts chapter 2 tells us the story as if the disciples suddenly acquired the gift of speaking in tongue, like speaking in foreign languages. The significance of the day of Pentecost is that the gospel was preached to the people from all around the world. And they were able to understand in their own language. This is like the great commission which Jesus um, charged the disciples to do, right? To the whole world. This was the beginning of God's work to the world that all of us are called to do through the Holy Spirit. With the emphasis on all of us, and the Holy Spirit. The action plan is for all of us, okay, because all of us are called to do God's work, and that is through the Holy Spirit. Let me clarify a few things before we continue. The Acts of the Apostles by Ellen White says, it is not essential for us to be able to define just what the Holy Spirit is, the nature of the Holy Spirit is mystery. But there are a few things we know about the Holy Spirit as we can study the work of the Holy Spirit. What happened on the day of Pentecost can be misleading because we may think that the Holy Spirit came into existence at that time. Well, that is not true at all. God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit are eternal, and they existed before the beginning of creation. And we see this even in Acts, right? The, the Holy Spirit was um, speaking in David, okay? Um, in Acts, uh, according to uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 16, um, he's a spirit spoke, the Spirit spoke through um, Isaiah in Acts chapter 28. Stephen accuses the Jewish of having, all through their history, opposed the Spirit, okay? In Acts chapter 7, verse 51. In that sense, the Spirit is God in every age revealing uh, His truth to man. Then the next question is, okay, so then what does the Spirit do? The main work of the Holy Spirit is the Spirit convicts the heart of sinners. When you feel like, Oh man, I, um, I should be better. Uh, I shouldn't be doing this. Uh, I need some changes in my life. I really should, should use a kind words to others. Uh, it's, this is probably the right thing to do. And um, I should probably lift others up. Like all these good things, right? It, it's the Holy Spirit working within you. I don't believe that it's your good side or your conscience uh, talking. It's the Holy Spirit. He is your good side, and He works with your conscience if you allow Him. Another thing we see in the Bible, especially in the book of Acts, is that the Holy Spirit provides guidance. The Spirit moves Philip to, to make contact with the Ethiopian eunuch. Um, uh, he prepares Peter for the coming of the um, emissaries of Cornelius, orders Peter to go out hesitation with, with these emissaries. Um, he enables Agabus to foretell the coming of famine. Um, he orders the, the, the setting, uh, he orders the setting, the, the setting apart um, of Paul and Barnabas to, to do God's work, right? To, to preach the gospel to, um, to the Gentiles. Um, it's the Holy Spirit that guides the decisions of the Council of Jerusalem. I can go on and on how the Spirit guided the followers of Jesus throughout the book of Acts. The early church was a spirit-guided community. 
And then something special happened to the followers of Jesus as described in today's passage. The Holy Spirit came down like the wind and the fire. Here's what's incredible about these images. Uh, if you take a look at the biblical roots of the wind and the fire throughout the Bible, the wind always represented the presence of the Holy Spirit, and the fire is a direct allusion to the stories about God's glorious presence filling the tabernacle and the temple. Also, they are connected to the prophetic promises of God that he would come and live by his spirit in the new temple according to Ezekiel chapter 43 or Haggai chapter 2. And the new temple referred to people and not a place. So here in today's passage, God's fiery presence and the Holy Spirit's presence like the wind dwelt not in the building, but in his people. What we see here is the presence of God and the Holy Spirit may dwell in his people, the followers of Jesus Christ. This is how we um, are now a temple of God. You are a temple of God. The presence of God and the Holy Spirit now dwell in you, in all of us. Now then, what happened to the followers of Jesus who received the Holy Spirit and experienced the dwelling of God. Look at verse 4 again. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Ella Casey, what does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? This phrase, being filled with the Holy Spirit, only occurs in Luke and in Acts, okay? This is like Luke's slogan, very unique to just his writings. So what does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Remember, the work of the Holy Spirit is to convict your heart and provide guidance. Being filled with the Holy Spirit means we yield our heart and mind to the work of the Holy Spirit. It is no longer I who dictate or decide what I do in my life, but I wholly submit to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I am not the master of my life, but the Holy Spirit is. The Spirit leads me and guides me. My friends in LAKC, I have a super important question for you to answer. From the passage today, we see that we have the Spirit. But does the Spirit, does the Holy Spirit have you? Man, this is powerful. We have the Spirit, but does the Spirit have you? You have to let the Holy Spirit have you. Loma Linda Church, I'm praying that today's message is not just something you watch on TV or on your laptop. I really wish we were together in person, but we can't be. But here it is. I'm just praying that this is life-changing. Let the Spirit have you. Think about that throughout the whole series. The goal of this series is not for you to have knowledge of the Holy Spirit or the, or the knowledge from the book of Acts. Okay? It isn't so that you can have better understanding of the Holy Spirit or the better understanding of the, the book of Acts. I don't want this to be a, a, a PE theory class where you, you gain knowledge of how to run. Okay, I want you to actually run. I want you to experience the Holy Spirit. I hope to see you in action. Church, I want to see you in action, living a Spirit-filled life. 
And the same thing goes for me. I want to live a spirit-filled life as well. Living in action. I want our church community to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ellen White wrote this, and I quote, Unless the members of God's church today have a living connection with the source of all spiritual growth, meaning the Holy Spirit, they will not be ready for the time of reaping. Unless they keep their lamps trimmed and burning, they will fail of receiving added grace in times of special need. The book of Acts is also called the Acts of the Apostles. And it's got two parts. Part one is from chapters 1 to 12, and it describes the work of the Holy Spirit from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria. And in this series, we're only going to be able to cover up to chapter 12. Part two describes the work beyond Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria to the ends of the earth. And it's from chapter 13 through what? Does anyone know what the last chapter of Acts is? Have you ever read Acts chapter 29? Anyone? Well, nobody has ever read Acts chapter 29. Trust me. And it's not because it doesn't exist, but the book of Acts in the Bible does end with chapter 28. But then why do I speak of Acts chapter 29? Ella Casey, the book of Acts is the only book of the Bible that is still being written. It's an account of spirit-filled followers of Jesus continuing the work of God, and the work has not ended yet. It keeps going and going. Like the Energizer Bunny, your work keeps going. And it'll keep going and going until Jesus comes. Not just me, but by all of us. Not by our might, but by the Spirit. We need to write Acts chapter 29. You are the writer of your own Acts chapter 29, 30, 31, and so on. You are the action plan. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for calling all of us to do your holy work. Now, because you called us, Father, I pray that you be with us as we do the work. And Lord, for that you promised us the Holy Spirit. So help us in this God's this holy work together in our effort. Help us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.